Granite City Food and Brewery has two Michigan locations in Troy and Northville. Serves made from scratch food, brews in-house beer, and even has brunch every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. To learn more about their daily specials or to book a private party, visit GCFB.com. Make sure you head over to Granite City in Northville at the corner of Seven Mile and Haggerty or the Troy location at 16 Mile and I-75. Are you looking to play at the next level? MSN is now offering player recruitment videos. We are excited to partner with you and your family in getting you to the next level. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the MichiganSoccerNetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Now Worrell has a good cutback from him. He'll fire one, and that's going to go in! of Michigan student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports are supposed to be played. We were responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic students can thrive. We believe athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe students in the stand should have fun, but not take the focus away from the game. We believe coaches should act as teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and be supportive of their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports. While maintaining a high level of respect for all those involved in the games. Enjoy, enjoy the game! game. to take your game to the next level. Did you know that MSN is now offering player recruitment videos? Our packages include a player profile where you show your preferred positions, the club, the league or school that you play in, your current coach contact information, and more. The highlight videos could be self-submitted 15 to 30 clips that will be put into a three to seven minute long video. Video review of your huddle, VO, or other platforms that you might have video on, as well as for an additional charge, MSN can come out and film games for you to create those clips. Our coach evaluation process, which is also an additional charge, where we have college coaches from various levels across the United States that will review your game film and provide feedback on how to improve that film, as well as also evaluating your play and what you can improve on. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Our mission is to help players take their game to the next level and reach their potential. Not only do we help develop fundamental technical skills such as ball control and tight spaces with different surfaces, dribbling at speed and changing direction, 
using a variety of 1v1 skills to create space, receiving on a half turn, hook turn, and out of the air, finishing off the dribbling, one touch, volleys, and headers. We help players get comfortable performing these skills at game speed with pressure and with both their dominant and non-dominant foot. In addition, we help players with their speed of play, awareness of space, defenders and teammates, and also dominate with our off the ball movement. We offer a variety of services such as one-on-ones, small groups, large groups, as well as team sessions. We have an experienced coaching staff that is professional, friendly, patient, while still holding players to high standards and holding them accountable. No matter what level you're at as a player, I'm confident we can help you get better. Over the past three years, we've built one of the best soccer-specific training facilities in the country and developed one of the most detail-oriented programs to help out players. Visit our website. I'm a husband, I'm a father. I'm a sister. I'm a son, I'm a brother. I'm a daughter, I'm a sister. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. In for Bacharach, and that goes in! Hugo Bacharach gives Flint City a 3-2. Buckley, oh, the ball falls to Buckley. What I want with Etheridge, what a save! Welcome into the first ever MSN All-State Media Day for Girls Soccer. Jonathan Turner alongside Dan Stickrat. Ball comes in, a good hit! Effectively today here on the Michigan Soccer Network, we are launching our new division of player recruitment videos. Mario Canu now finds Sock. Finds Sock's got a left-footed banger. He shoots it! It's in! The Red Hawks equalize! Hello, everybody, and welcome once again into Dick By Stadium here in Auburn Hills, Michigan. That's right, it's, it is East CNL Boys Soccer. It's Sunday, the Ohio premiere coming in here, taking on National Soccer Club live on the Michigan Soccer Network. Alongside Alex Lubianski, I am Jonathan Turner, and we are excited to have you along, whether you are near or far. And Alex, making his MSN debut, welcome. Thank you, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Can't wait to see some football this morning. Beautiful day. No ability to blame any bad touches on the environment. Great turf, great weather, very, very subtle wind conditions with some gusts. That it is. And uh, we were here out here yesterday for six games uh, yesterday afternoon and, and morning. And uh, the Nationals taking on Ohio Elite yesterday. So it's the battle of, uh, the, I wouldn't say the Midwest, but, you know, definitely the I-75 going south uh, battle here is uh, the Nationals yesterday did a clean sweep. Uh, well, they undefeated yesterday, 5-1 and one overall, 24 goals for just three against against the Ohio Elite. The Nationals 08 beat Ohio Elite 2-1 one in that first matchup yesterday. 2011's beat Ohio Elite seven nothing. The Nationals 07 tied Ohio Elite one to one. The 2010's beat Ohio Elite two nothing. The Nationals then beat uh, the 0506 beat uh, the Ohio side seven nothing, and then uh, the 09's beat Ohio five to one. So uh, big big day for the Nationals yesterday as they 
as they cleaned up, as I would say, 24 goals for just three against. If it's your first time stopping by here on the Michigan Soccer Network, all we ask is that you hit that subscribe button. It's going to be a beautiful day here in Michigan. 55 degrees right now. Expected 79, partly sunny the entire day. Yesterday was beautiful from the standpoint of sun and clear skies. It was a little colder, 62. It's Michigan, and uh, the weather does, uh, Alex, from time to time, uh, drop or increase uh, by 20 and 30 degrees uh, just between uh, one day and the next. Yeah, largely a Michigan native myself. I'm well aware of the old axiom, if you don't like the weather in Michigan, just wait a couple hours and it'll sort itself out. That's right, that's right, as we are just moments away here from the start of this game, as we uh, kick our music off here, get our scoreboard ready to go here. It is going to be a beautiful day, a beautiful day for soccer. Ohio Elite, uh, well, it's not here today. Ohio Premier is. I might screw that up a bunch of times, so I'll, I'll try not to, uh, Alex. Um, it just I'm so used to saying Ohio Elite now that I'm just going to continue to say them. You have uh, figured it out a long time ago. <laughs> You, you just call everything from that state, Ohio, and then you can't go That's wrong, right. can you? That's right. Ohio, though, will be in the gray and white kits. They'll be going right to left on your screen, a little black trim on their jerseys as well. The Nationals will be in black, all black here today. Uh, interesting choice, being it's going to be 80 degrees, but I'm the, who, to, who am I to tell them what to wear and what not to wear? In goal will be Do David Josevesky uh, in goal. Do not know the goalkeeper for Ohio Premier. Did not have a chance to talk with the coach here before the game. So, hey, moms and dads, uh, we're going to need some help. If you can tell us who the goalkeeper is, that would be fantastic. But uh, we'll have to roll. But to get your comments in, hey, we, we expect engagement here on MSN. And that means it comes in the form of, hey, rooting on, telling us where you're watching this game. Yesterday we had f uh, family in, uh, in Boca Raton, Florida, in Lexington, Kentucky, in Chicago, in Cincinnati. Uh, so please... Please tell us where you're watching this game today. And we are excited to have you along as we're about ready to turn everything up here and get ready for this kickoff. Forty-five. These are 07, so the 2007 age group, I uh, believe, uh, though, 45 minute halves as we are officially underway here. From Avondale High School, Dick By Stadium, Jonathan Turner alongside Alex Lubianski. And the first half kick. I'm a big fan of the long ball off the, off the kick. I'm not sure how you feel about that, uh, you know, Alex. Are, are you a big fan of the long ball? I know UPL, uh, EPL, it's a big deal. You start kicking the ball, testing that back line right away. You know, the sport's a delicate balance of risk and reward, and there's very little that can go wrong if the ball goes big off the kickoff. I can appreciate the mentality of just putting it forward. Uh, you start stroking around at the back as your first five passes. You really often see giveaways, and then you might give up an early goal. So I understand it fully. Good thing is, is Ohio Premier's jerseys do not have the same color numbers as their jerseys that we just saw yesterday. We could not figure out the numbers for Ohio Elite. So the good news here, we can see these numbers, so we'll be able to get these names out there as much as we possibly can. That's Brandon Spencer, who just passed the ball. And that one cleared up by Javion Reddit for the Nationals. Ball all the way back to the goalkeeper. Hope we can look here at the jersey number. Something different, you know, when I grew up, uh, I played goalkeeper, Alex. Uh, my number was one, zero, or double zero. Uh, those were my options. Maybe even a triple zero if you had more than three goalkeepers. But goalies now, they don't have a problem wearing like 99, 73, 64. Uh, it, just whatever number is, uh, floats their boat, I guess. Yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating one. I, I think on the youth side, it might largely be a result of guest playing and just having a number that is unique to yourself where if you're going to play with another side, you've only purchased the jersey for the whole seasonal cycle and you wear it. On the professional side, it's rare to see something other than one these days, especially when you are that number one. It's a really great feeling to wear that kit. No question. So Max Bond is the goalkeeper here today for Ohio Premier. want to say thank you to Gretchen Bond. <laughs> for the heads up and I'm sure Max is great will as well. That's awesome. We don't typically are we're not typically told who the officials are in these matchups, uh, but I can tell you for sure that that assistant referee his name is Ryan Tadajewski. He was my backup goalkeeper at Athens High School during the, the 2000 or late 90s when I graduated from Troy Athens High School. So um, much love to Ryan Tadajewski, the assistant referee here on the near side. What a beautiful tidbit. <laughs> So not much moving here early on in this one. Not unexpected as 
This ball makes its way here into the 18. It's Lucas Brinkman. Slots this one into the 18 on. And in the air, broken up and cleared away by the Nationals defense. Ball popped up and that will be off sides for Mr. Brinkman. These are the 2007, so uh, we, we were having this conversation. I, my, my guess would be you're either a late, you know, it's good to be graduating, going into your junior year, or you are existing junior. Yeah, I think the question logistically is always, are these guys driving themselves here? If they are, you got a very different pregame that you got to figure out. If you're not, you're just a passenger and pretty much there, ready to go that way. So Brinkman here up this near side, gets by JV on Reddit. Oh, that's a great defensive play by number 13 and Brian Lawrence. Great stick. So that looks like the first foul here. Pretty good touch by the referee. I, I think you gotta get that early one to get all the uh, anxiety out and she settled it nice. <laughs> Ball sent to the box and then cleared away. That was intended for Steven Dawit. So Lori Rabe, Holland, Michigan. Let's go Nationals. I, I like Holland. I've been to Holland many times. Great city. Had a great uh, dinner at an Irish pub in downtown Holland. There's a lot of Irish pubs in downtown Holland. But there was this one that had this patio outside. Uh, I can't think of the name of the street, but it was really good. Wood shoes, windmills, gotta love Holland, Michigan. They got a great ice cream store and a bookstore right next to it. Was, it was, it's just a really cool city. Michigan's got a lot of great cities. As Brinkman puts this one into the box and makes its way to the far side of the pitch. Tell you what, John, from the early going, Ohio's had a lot of the ball. This might be a different Sunday than it was a Saturday this week. No question about that. Is this next five minutes is broadcast brought to you by Granite City Food and Brewery. Granite City Food and Brewery, eat good eats, drink good drinks, have good times. You can visit Detroit location at the corner of 16 Mile and I-75 or the Northville location at 7 Mile and Haggerty. You can check out their daily specials Monday through Friday. They got all they can build your own burger on Mondays including french fries, for only $6.99. You can't go to McDonald's and get a burger and fries in a combo for less than $6.99. So it is an unbelievable deal. they got great specials all week long. A brunch, they have brunch right now, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. every single Sunday. Uh, so that's a great, great place to go get your food and get your drink on. So Granite City Food and Brewery, gfcb.com is the place to go. Good head there by Reddit. Back in possession here of Ohio Premier. It's called the Cur the Curaw? The Curaw? Maybe I'm pronouncing that wrong. The Brinkman. I didn't bring my enunciation guide this morning, but I'll, I'll look into it at the half. No worries. So now that's DeWitt. And it puts it up top. He's looking for Dennis Redzap. This goes all the way back to Bond. Bond wearing the green goalkeeper kit. And on the flip side there, Josefsky is wearing the neon yellow kit. I'll tell you what, Bond's got great east-west movement and build-out. He's very involved in their ability to keep the ball out of the back and look for moments to go forward. Ball sent up here to number 55 and Brandon Spencer. DeWitt was looking for Brinkman. That one did not finalized as he intended and not really seeing a ton of possession from either side. They're getting some passes here and there and then they're losing it usually in the final third. The Nationals really haven't gotten deep down into Ohio Premier's defensive third yet here in this game, Alex. No, not quite yet. It looks like they're a bit rushed going forward when they do win the ball. We'll see how it develops. Early morning, they might not quite be awake yet. You don't know. While we're doing this game right now behind us, 
And up top is our crew number two. They're covering the 2000, um, right now the 2010s on the uh, field behind us. Those are 40 minute halves. Alex Johnson and Giovanni Mosseri are up there in the press box. Yeah, we'll see if this is an early trend there if it continues, but National seems to defend with nine, keep one high in the center of the pitch, and then there's generally a drifter out wide on the left that they look to play on that first pass out. We'll see if that continues. Hard collision there on the far side, and there's a foul. Their hard collision. Nothing doing there, says the referee. Okay, give a big shout out here to Vicky, staff coordinator here at Avondale, doing a fantastic job for us here these last couple days, making sure we get into the press box because that's half the battle at most locations, just being able to get into the press box, having access. It's half so, the battle in most vocations as well. And she was early both days. Just like being a, a, able to be We didn't even ask to get in this spot. early. She got it early. That's that, you know... You can't buy that labor anymore, man. <laughs> getting early is not part of the new, uh, the new recipe uh, for success, I think, in this world. <laughs> Showing up is optional in the new world. That's uh, for sure. Ball moved back around. Yeah, we appreciate you stopping by here on this Sunday morning. We have three games here today. Not one, not two, but three games here on the broadcast. On tap here, this first matchup, the 2007s, as we talked about, coming up here at 11 a.m., the 2008s, and then the flag goes up on that far side, is offside, is called. And the 0506s will to go play, take place at 1 p.m. So all of that is on tap here this it morning and afternoon. Bit of a trend from Ohio, two set pieces from midfield. Often you see those just lumped into the box and hoping for something. Both times they played short. They were able to find some success on the ball. I think there could be a, a really positive morning on their part, having control of the game. Ball played behind. The Nationals attacker and Lincoln Floyd, he scored a goal yesterday in their matchup. As he finds Red Zap. Try to spin out of that was Brian Lawrence, unable to do that, but does receive the throw in. So here, 11 minutes in, not much doing here in this one so far for either side, no real opportunities. But we'll dive into our next five minute partner, Trivoloni Asset Management. Your success is our success. Your financial goals are our sole focus, and we are excited to partner with you. Visit trivam.com, it's T-R-I-V-A-M.com, or call 586-665. 8805. Your financial success starts with a call. This ball moved around to that far side. At the bottom of your screen, you've got our MSN ticker. That's got all the information about MSN. And you have our score and schedule flipper. At the bottom of that screen, you have all the games as they have happened here yesterday, as well as what's happening here uh, today. So check that out. Tonight, live from our MSN studios in Shelby Township, Michigan, Dan Stickrad and I will bring you the Michigan High School Soccer Coaches Association High School Ranking Show. The top 15 teams from all across the state of Michigan in each of the four divisions. So that tonight taking place 8 p.m. Eastern. So as soon as we're done here at 3.30, I'll be racing home, getting the kiddos off at home, getting them set up, and then race to the studio to produce that game, that, that uh, ranking show at 8 p.m. Eastern here tonight on our YouTube channel. So, a lot going on. So, Mataj Mijanewski is watching from Macedonia. Well, we love, that is so far, of this weekend, that is the farthest that we have, the furthest distance that someone's been watching us is Macedonia, so... I'm assuming that's the country. Not, I think there are some cities called Macedonia in this country. So I, I want to just confirm that that's Macedonia, the country. I right? think it has to be. It's the global game, and to have a viewer from there is fantastic. So welcome. Welcome to the stream. I, I know I probably butchered your name, but I gave it a go. 
I wasn't given pronunciations for the players' names either, but we can kind of practice this a little bit. Yours just kind of came out on the fly. <laughs> You know, often in the modern game, three at the back is really more like five, and haven't seen Nationals get forward enough to really test it, but Ohio's been pretty consistently with three at the back with a proper center back between the three, and uh, Sims has been an interesting player. He's drifted out to the left, and as a right-footed player, he's played a diagonal ball very accurately. It's a difficult skill to execute. It'll be interesting how it develops throughout the game. Ball up over the top of that back line. The Nationals, Brinkman tries to run onto it and tied up with Reddit. Brayman comes back in. He wins the battle in the short term. Has the ball here outside the 18. Looks to put this one into the box. Finds a target. Left footed shot deflected through traffic as it makes its way now to Reddit. He'll clear this one up and not out of danger. Brayman been very active here in the early going. Yeah, I like this Brinkman kid. Good little scoop dribble earlier. Good composure on the side of the box there to find a service. Be a proper winger. So a goal kick coming up here for the Nationals. So we are entering the 15th minute of this game. It's 0-0 or nil-nil, as they say across the pond. <laughs> Here we just call it 0-0. Love, love in the great sport of tennis. <laughs> oh, boy. Tennis. I don't know if you can put great sport in front of tennis. I, I mean, I'm just, I, I know, I, I, I think tennis is, is I mean, you know. I, uh, to those that love the sport, I guess you could put it. But You, 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 know, you haven't uh, seen the feature film King Richard. <laughs> I have seen the film. It's a great movie. It is. It's, it's outstanding. And that makes me call tennis a great sport. Don't go watch Civil War, though. I watched that on Friday with my wife. It was the worst movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Do not watch it. That is right. That's a terrible movie. Thank you very You're much. I, it it was not, not on my radar, but now it's not certainly it. not. <laughs> this ball shifted out wide in that cross attempt from Red Zip. Well off target. Shout out to our production crew here today. Sam Fisher, our technical director. Up top, we've got uh, Nathan on camera. Ryan Gannon is on field two's camera, along with Giovanni Moseri and Alex Johnson as our commentators. Brianna Turner and Zoe Turner on audio and graphics. So, you know, also on snack duty, which is also important, you know. The family jealousy is real this morning. Ben and Tyler Lubyansky probably haven't gotten out of bed yet. So that's very well done by the Turners. Awesome. This is ball inside the 18. Might be a shot here from distance through traffic. Does not make its way to target. Vicky was just showing me her grandson, who gave, who happens to be a goalkeeper of his own, it looked like. Goalkeeper. I'm a goalkeeper. I'm a former goalkeeper. So pretty cool. That assistant referee down there, he's a goalkeeper. Well, he was a goalkeeper. I don't know if he still plays. I became a goalkeeper the first time I was at training, and they said, you have to run a lap unless you're the goalkeeper. <laughs> well. I had to run a lot of laps. I went to Troy Athens. It was required of me to run three mile, the Cooper's test, eight, uh, 10 and a half laps in 18 minutes, the one mile run, uh, three quarter, half mile, quarter mile. All of that was required in just the first two days of tryouts. Did you guys ever kick a ball at that school? Or? We, well, we won championships. I mean, you know, we, it, it, we're not, they don't do that anymore, but you know, the, the goal was, I think at that point in time, our, our goal from Tim Storch was whoever got the started throwing up. That's when he really started enjoying tryouts. <laughs> now that's considered cruel and unusual punishment, and you'll, you know, you'll be thrown in jail for anything like that. So, That's right. Different world we live in today. That's when lawn darts were a thing. <laughs> Ball moves around to that far side. Again, not much going on for either side here. Only one shot that went wide for Ohio Premier. No shots so far for the Nationals as Reddit wins the ball and gives it right back to Brinkman and the Premier. Ohio's got some real nuanced movement with the front three. I like DeWitt, their center forward. He's found some pockets of space. He's checked back. He's gone out wide and then replaced players out there. Very active. From the early going, I think they're the more interesting team going forward for sure. As Brinkman puts this one in back post and no one there to get it. Just 
over the head of the Ohio Premier attacker. It's actually number 31, and DeWitt that went over his head. The next five minutes is broadcast brought to you by FC Barcelona. FC Barcelona soccer camps coming this June 10th through June 14th at the Legacy Sports Center in Brighton, Michigan. To learn more about all their great information about this camp, you can head over to camps.fcbarcelona.us. Again, you can go there and also register for camp. And guess what? We got you a code that saves you 30 bucks off registration. It's FCBMSN24. You put that code in, you'll save 30 bucks off registration. So why not get great coaching, great camp experience, and save some money along the way. FC Barcelona Camps. That's camps.fcbarcelona.us. Now DeWitt, inside the 18, heavy traffic. Puts this one back, and now this one into the box towards Brinkman. Brinkman off the woodwork. Rebound. Open net. DeWitt comes in, oh. saved off the line. Magical, magical donkey touch by Brinkman. You don't see it often. Certainly caught the goalkeeper by surprise. Rattles the cage. What a moment. What a moment. Slow to get up, DeWitt. So DeWitt had an opportunity on the open net rebound. Slotting over comes in a defender from the Nationals, saves it off the goal line, but talk about a succession of play there. Those quick opportunities. Brinkman, with, I'm not even sure how he got a touch on that. That could have been a goal of the season hits, candidate. Hits if that off went in. the woodwork, somehow does not go in, and then a scurry to find a way to get it in did not happen. So a corner kick here, first one of the match. This one's low. DeWitt on the ball. Play it back out wide. This one comes back in, into the mix. And now finally cleared away up over midfield. So the Nationals able to withstand that pressure. Brian Lawrence now will look to switch. This actually hits off his teammate. It was Owen Glover. Kamaj. He'll get it back. Did I do that right? I say it right? Sure did. All right. Woo. All the pregame prep work paying that, off big that, for the Kamaj that, family. That's right. That's right. Again, not given the pronunciation. That's what we assumed based off of One of experience. my best friends coming up had that last name, and that's how we said it. Fair enough. So Brinkman tries to win this one back, and Reddit clears it up and out. So here we are, 21 minutes into this game at 0-0. The best opportunity of the match coming here just a few moments ago off of a Brinkman wonder touch. Hit off the woodwork. Crossbar came down. The rebound left an open net. DeWitt comes in, gets a touch on it, and then saved off the line from the Nationals defender. Don't know who it was. I believe it was Brian Lawrence, number 13, who came across tell you what that looked a lot like a usl championship game with just bodies flying blocks all the exciting parts that you would see in a professional indoor game right inside of the box off of that first amazing donkey touch by brinkman and it was exciting it was a great sequence so ball goes out lawrence tried to keep it on the pitch as this next part of the match brought to you by none other than the national soccer club that's right, achieving, achieving a more together. Learn more about joining the Nationals family. Visit nationalsoccer.com to learn more about tryouts and all the Nationals have to offer. They've got 16 locations in Michigan and are one of the fastest growing clubs in the nation. Learn more about them at nationalssoccer.com. This ball comes in, out will come David Jaszewski. I mean, it's just amazing how far we've come as a network in the last two and a half years, Alex. I mean, it started with me and an iPad back in May of 2021, just out doing this, uh, doing it for free with a, just a dynamic mic in my hand. Um, it was fun. We had a blast doing it. It went then from to two iPads, and then it went to everything you see here with tool, dual monitors here. We've got, we've got two simultaneous broadcasts happening at the exact same time right now. 12 games in two days as Brinkman inside the 18 tries to cut back. He's got two defenders on him. Looks at the top of the 18. 
This one put back into it. Brinkman diving header, and it somehow just goes wide of his head and wide of frame. What a great ball coming in, though, from Jackson Chio. Inches from magic. Inches, inches, inches from magic. Really enjoying this. I mean, talk about that. I mean, the level of play we're seeing right now, just the, the buildup of play that we're seeing from Ohio Premier and the types of balls and then the effort that you're seeing to get something on frame. First off, the first 15 minutes of this was a slow going as far as opportunity. The last six minutes have been something special. Yeah, again, nothing like a high school aged boys early morning game. They're all just getting into it. It takes a while to get into the game, but once they do, there's really been some special moments, some exciting dribbles great acrobatic attempts at goal and I'll tell you what this MSN thing it's it's really not only does it have legs but it's the perfect time as the youth game has developed so much the professional game developed so much to have a network committed to showing the game within the state of Michigan and beyond has really been amazing and yeah it's the perfect time for it you look at the quality of play on the field this is a far cry from the youth soccer of yesterday uh, you got teams with real attacking ideas teams with real identities You've got six matches in one morning where you get to see an entire club system style and philosophy. And uh, it's just captivating to watch. I hope the viewers are enjoying it, but certainly as a fan of the game, this is, this is as good as it gets. That it is, is opportunity there is Spencer. Ball inside Middle Park now. Good switch from Meacham. Lost on that far side, Nationals regain possession. Can they really been on their heels here in this first half? Far cry from yesterday. The 07s did tie yesterday 1-1, but it's now read it when cleared up. Good ball out wide to Lincoln Floyd. So with the National, I'd be more patient in the attack right here. You hang on to the ball. You're, you're dribbling into no man's land right there on the width with three players from Ohio on your side. You maybe you want to do that one. Be a little more patient. Pull that back. Maybe get back to Reddit. Allow Reddit to maybe see the field differently. Move some players. The goal here when you're seeing a team like this, and this is my perception. I'm, not a co I'm a former coach, not at a high level like you were, Alex. Uh, but, you know, you're, you're trying to shift players, right? The reason why you pull that ball back to a Reddit is, is to maybe draw another defender to him, make a shift. Hey, even give it back to Floyd, right? That's fine. You see it all the time in the EPL. You see players get the ball four and five times in a five or six yard space. All that's doing is just trying to draw traffic. And if you can do it well and get some one and two touch out of there, something can build from that if, if you have the right pieces moving in, in succession. Uh, you're exactly right, and we're about 25 minutes into the match, and this is the first time we've seen all 10 outfield players on Nationals in the attacking half at the same time. They finally entered that space. Let's see if they can do something with it. Uh, again, it's been a very cagey affair on their part, trying to snap on the counter into two players that have sat a bit high. Uh, we'll see if anything different comes. They also made some substitutions, new faces in the game, so could be a change. That was a special moment. A little back heel there from towards Giovanni King. Good decision there as this one goes back to Spencer. As he elects to play back as well. That was Sims. Yeah, Good switch he's been Sims. throwing darts. He's been throwing darts today, Sims has. Now to Spencer on this near side. Game being taking place at Dick Bay Stadium at Avondale High School, home of the Yellow Jackets. A good counterattack here for the Nationals. Good work by Brian Lawrence. A good takeover. Here comes King. A look, and that's an open. Oh, it's an own goal. So the save made by Max Bond finds its way off the foot of King and in the back of the net from the Ohio Premier, and the Nationals have a 1 0 lead. Tail all this time, John. Numerical advantage going forward, a little 4v2. They make use of it, and again, what's possession good for if you're not doing that at the end of it? You know, they certainly haven't had the run to play, but now they have the lead on the scoreboard, so credit to Nationals. So a 27th minute goal, it's gonna be scored as an own goal. It was, uh, again, you know, that's one of the things, you know, when it hits off, when it hits off a player like that, it's an own goal.
I know a lot of times you know, people want to score the goal to to a player that last touched it. That's not how it works. That, I think that's how it works. Is that how it works in hockey? I feel like if it, is that, is it, they don't have own goals. They have own goals in hockey? No, so it's the last player it touches off in hockey. So in hockey, they've got it right. Right? Is that what they say? Because even in, in soccer, and but this is where they get things, again, it's weird. It's what's wrong in hockey and soccer. If it hits off the post, the woodwork, in soccer and in hockey, it does not count as a shot on frame. That's, 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 that's nuts to me. Isn't that, and that, <laughs> this seems nuts. Do you take a shot, it hits the goal. I've got to it review hits, my, hits the post. My, my hockey acumen it does on not, this. It does not count as a shot on frame. But if it hits off the post and goes in, is it a shot that is not on frame? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, do you see how? You, you, see, I, I got my producer. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm putting it out there. Sam's highly involved in this line of thought. And uh, man, I'll tell you what. Sullivan that was absolutely put this one back an own goal, though. It's a great save by the goalkeeper and just unlucky. Um, and I appreciate that about our game. Well, you know, Brian Lawrence did a great job of winning. That. So, so Brian, Law so it, it started off with with Brian Lawrence getting through that traffic. Yeah, Lincoln Floyd involved as well. Ultimately, finds his way to Giovanni King. King is in there one on one. It's a tough. It's a tough moment for both those players to to execute. King puts a great low ball down. The goalkeeper Max Bond makes a fantastic diving save to his left, and then hey, the momentum of his defender who's trailing back to stop that. You know, get the rebound. It's whatever. One of the it's hardest just, saves to make, and the fact yeah. that he made it with his hand is. Highly impressive. How often do you see that ball right on the ground next to the goalkeeper's foot just go under them when they try to get their hand on it? You see a lot of foot saves in the modern game for that reason. It was an amazing save, great reaction, great body manipulation, and then again, just highly unfortunate and unlucky to get the own goal. But going back to your pontification there about the own goal in the football. I gotta get this read in. I want to get this read in and then we'll talk about it. I, I do want to talk about this. This is a, a very it's a very important read because we're talking about player recruitment videos. Recently MSN launched and uh, we announced our launch of our player recruitment highlight videos program. Our programs are designed for every player's needs and budgets, whether you already have a video or um, and want more exposure or you need to start from scratch. The Michigan Soccer Network is ready to help you get you to where you want to go. To learn more about our highlight Highlight video program. Go to MichiganSoccerNetwork.com. Select the highlight video section, and that's where you can find and start your your journey for your highlight player recruitment videos. Starts with a click. But uh, I want you to finish your thought. I wanted to get that read in. I'm sorry. Oh, look, there's two sides to every coin. What I appreciate about the own goal going on the score sheet is it's that bit of character building on the part of the player that unfortunately makes that touch and does get the own goal is they have to deal with all right i'm on the score sheet i've put it in the wrong side but i'm still playing the game that i love i'm going to keep going i'm going to fight through this in hockey there's no accountability if you're telling me you score on yourself and it just goes to the guy in the other team as a regular goal and then you got fans scanning the score sheet in hockey and there's no evidence there's no written record for the rest of his life he'll have that to deal with and i think it's a positive it's a character builder so i appreciate that about our game well said, Alex. You saw the replay from that goal here just a moment ago. All that. Again, just to build up, it was a perfect counterattack with numbers forward for the Nationals. Uh, if you talk about this game, if you look at this game, if you're watching from home, and we, I, I've been to a lot of games and watched, I mean, we did a thousand of these broadcasts over the last three years. So I can tell you uh, that we see a lot of games where possession, opportunity, all of those things heavily in favor of one team. Yeah, you know, and, yeah, and, 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 and I'm listening to example. you guys in your interview with Lawless, and you guys are talking about win pretty, win ugly, all of those things. Now, I understand this isn't the men's national team that we're watching here today, but nonetheless, they are, in fact, winning 1-0, and do you care? I don't. They're winning. I think it's beautiful. So it's a great sport where you don't need the ball to score. You don't need the run of play to win a game. And you take the ingredients you have, and an expert chef just makes the dish. Well, there you go. You heard it from Alex Lubianski. Live on the Michigan Soccer Network here on this Sunday morning. We're live from Dick Bay Stadium here in Auburn Hills, Michigan, about 25 miles from downtown Detroit, home of the 2024 NFL Draft, coming here in just two short weeks. Everyone's eyes will be watching the city of Detroit, which, to be fair, has done a fantastic job over the years of really making Detroit something special 
So, Turner, what's the debate with this Detroit sign, the Hollywood-esque Detroit sign everyone's talking about? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? You, you have an opinion on this, Turner? I think that, you know, um, you know it, it, I'll give you a perfect example. I go to a restaurant all the time, or restaurants all the time, and the picture on the menu does not actually meet what you see on your plate. Right, so I'd love to see any type of a mock-up that's ever been given to anyone in history that is an exact replica of what they actually see in reality. <laughs> and if they do, then um, I would love for you to prove that to me because I have yet to see anything that's ever designed in a, uh, you know, in a box show up on your plate looking the exact same way. So that's my point. That's outstanding. That's <laughs> outstanding. You know, on the earlier corner kick from the opposite side that Ohio had, there was a reintroduction of, and largely resultant of the way the Nationals lines up defensively. You know, if that ball bounces back out, I'm not sure whose responsibility it is to prevent the reintroduction, but it didn't happen on the last one. We'll see if it happens again here. Ball comes in, good head, and cleared away by the Nationals defender. Ball cleared back to Spencer. He'll put this one back in the mix. It's going to bounce around. Those are dangerous balls to manage defensively. DeWitt, top of the 18. On his right foot, through traffic. And that's cleared away and out for another corner. Strong block. Sarah Swice says, go Nationals. Hey, we have, I, I am looking at comments on my phone. So if you want to have your name, your grandson, want to shout out anybody, uh, you know, keep it clean. We will announce it on the broadcast. We'll, we'll, you, know, you don't get to do this on ESPN. As this ball is played in and now clear right back out to where it came from. And this is the reintroduction I was just alluding to. You know, something I also got to say, we go to a lot of stadiums, and this is one of the better ones. You would think that in 2024, by now, they would figure something out where the bleachers are not, like, all, like, this sun, like, you know, just taking all that heat in and, and like, find a way to, like, I don't know, not project it right back into your face so you can turn into, like, a red lobster by the end of a game. I mean... Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Just, it just see, you see the sun and just beating off these bleachers. It's hot. It is, but to their credit, they've done a little flashing work you don't see at a lot of high schools. They've got the Avondale purple on the foot section of those bleachers, and, and they've done a nice job. You know, you go to almost any high school around the country, generally they don't do flashing, so credit to them for that one. If you're talking about some kind of cool gel seating inside of bleachers, I don't know if the taxpayer dollar goes that far, Turner, but let's go for it, man. I just, I'm just saying you think that they could from somehow find a way to, you know, engineer that. So, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I think somehow a lot of people can do things that are a lot more intelligent than you and I can. So I, I, I'm with you. I'd like to see it happen. I just have no answers. Spencer on the ball here just outside the 18. He'll enter the 18, cuts inside. This makes its way. Josieski. So now Don, so Cole Rosenbeck, hooray Nationals. Dominic Harmon, yip, yip, hooray. Kentiel White, let's go, Javion, go Nationals. So, they got my message. Comments coming in. You know, with the score change, Ohio started to take some more numbers going forward. They're sitting with two at the back most of the time in build out now, where it was three earlier in the game. You know, and, and this is the whole thing about snapping on a counterattack. Now the team that's had the run of play has to start finding even more ways to get forward, leaving them even more exposed. And we'll see. I mean, 1 0 is unlikely to be the end result of this match today. No question is this next part of the broadcast brought to you by Julia Zahn Real Estate. The real estate market can be messy, can be confusing when to buy, when to sell, home inspections, yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. Why not find a real estate partner that you can trust? Julia Zahn, call her at 248 422 2562. She services the entire state of Michigan people. Sorry for those of you in Ohio. I don't know if she can do that. But for the ones here in Michigan, she can definitely help you. Julia Zahn, 248-422-2562. Salem Orchard, Orchard says, go Brinkman, go Ohio Premier. We got you. Dual lineup. Not sure if it's a deceptive left-footed lineup or not. It does not matter. These kids don't know each other super well. If you look the part, you are the part. And maybe he does smash with his left foot. So they've got to account for both. It messes with the goalkeeper. It messes with wall placement. I love the dual lineup. So Sullivan stands over this one. I think he's going to take it, though. I lied. Hits the wall, though. 
Looks like it was taken by number 18. Is that the right number or is it 38? Can't see from here. Is that an 18? It's going to be quick. They're going to catch him. They are. Wasn't paying low shot right towards that near post. That kid's 100% left footed. There was no deception there. I think it was actually uh, Jackson Chio, number 12. I don't know who took that left footed shot though. I'm seeing 18. I am too, but I'm seeing 18 in the roster. Scanning the jerseys, maybe, maybe it's a guest situation. Maybe it's a, the tape fell off the kit situation. This is an investigative journalism mystery here. We'll sort it. That's right. That's right. We will. So here are our 38th, sorry, 39th minute, just six minutes to go here, plus stoppage time in this first half. You are watching ECNL Boys Soccer, Ohio Valley on the Michigan Soccer Network. Jonathan Turner alongside Alex Lubianski. Game one of a three-game set here on the main field at Avondale High School. Ball out wide on that far side is you'll see the Ohio Premier Defender Xavier Sims slide over. Defend that well. That's a good tackle on that far side as well. One back by the Nationals. Tell you what, in the world of tall tales of soccer, Bora Malatinovich, the head coach of the men's national team in the 90s, used to send players out to pick him up hot dogs and burgers at the stadium. Now again, true, false does not matter. It's a tall tale. Sam here is going to be sent to figure out this jersey mystery at the half. That he will is, that was Delcat getting tied up there just inside the 18 down by the end line. Ends up going off here for a throw in. Thoughts on Ohio elite commentators? Uh, well, we did it yesterday, so I thought they were pretty good. I'm speaking of myself, of course, but, you know. I'm Is that a licensure that you received, an Ohio elite commentator? Thoughts on Ohio elite commentators? I'm assuming they're talking about what we did yesterday. I thought we did a pretty good job, but uh, there, was one there was a field that did not have any commentators, so if that was the thoughts, but... Ball goes we out. We might need a follow-up comment. Uh, probably. It might, yeah. be, it might be one of those things where they didn't know it was me, and now they do. <laughs> but, I mean, we, you know, all it's of our commentators. Of words, Turner. All of you, our commentators. You and I can read the same sentence and have two completely different interpretations of what they're asking. That was London Sears with the left foot. So, London Sears. It's number eight. Okay. Maybe this point, if we saw the eight, we just couldn't see if there was a one there or a two. So, but either way, we appreciate your help. It is now Delcat, Troy Athens High School player. I remember this fall state championship team at Troy Athens, 40th first minute here. Well, that, that saved Sam the run. Sears left footed. Some good moments. Sarah Swice says, you did a great job yesterday. So fun to listen to. Well, we appreciate that. See, okay, well. Hey, you know, something that, I, it's funny because when, when we started doing this, I, I wanted to, because it's different. I, I was telling this to some the other day, like, you know, when I call a game for ESPN, you know, I, I, can't, I, I can't really be the full personality that I want to be, right? I, I'm limited. I'm not going to say, like, when I'm... First of all, I don't have any access to comments, so people at home are probably shaking their head how bad I am. So it's okay. <laughs> uh, but w w here, you know, I can, I can do all that. I, I can be... We can be this fun duo that, you know, takes it, you know, a little... A little, maybe a little left of center, a little right of center right at times, right? Have some fun. What is center, Turner? I don't even know anymore. I'd like a diagram. I'd like Chat GPT to draw me center. London Sears is 16, they said. Well, on, on this roster we have, we have his number eight. So that's probably why. And Meacham is eight. That is true. There are two. I have two eights on this roster, so that's probably why. So we'll make that adjustment right now. We do appreciate you letting us know. Brink, Brinkman's off to the races. That he is, up this near side. Good defensive play by the Nationals. 
tell you what, if he cuts that inside and drags his trailing foot, he gets a foul there. Whether or not there's contact, I think he gets a foul. All the greats trip themselves. So here we are, it's 43rd minute, just two minutes to go here in this opening half. Business end of this first half. one nothing here uh, off a 27th minute own goal from Ohio. Ooh. That's a great cross inside. Jovi Joseski makes the save. I saw your backup goalkeeper lift his flag at the moment that ball was struck. What did we miss? My guess is the ball went out of bounds. I think there could have been issue with the throw-in. I'm not sure what that would have been. You're a former official, John. I am. I don't, to be fair, I don't know. Um, Perhaps he took it from the wrong spot and they're giving him a retake. Which is a shame because that was a beautiful sequence of play. Great header, well held by the goalkeeper, Mr. Josefsky. He's done well there. That he has. This ball will go out. You know, in the world of goalkeeping, the best saves you make are in two moments. One is when your own teammate puts it on frame against you and you got to make something special. And the other is when, of course, the game isn't actually going on and you think it is. And that was one of those. Still goes on the highlight tape. That it does. Sun continues to show its brightness here on this Sunday morning. Hoping it goes a little higher so we don't have to look so hard through our squinting eyes. Spencer, right into Delicat. Looks plays up immediately, but good Sims is right there, makes good defensive play. Common coming in here is Dom Har uh, Hammond for ECNL Player of the Year. That'd be pretty cool. Ball way back now to Josievsky. You know, kind of one hand the number of times they've gone negative, and they just did it with some success. Let's see if they change their style a bit here. Ball. Dangerous play, one back by Brinkman. He's double teamed by Delicat. Now this one cleared away, as well as William Jekyll. In the Brinkman. Officially in stoppage time. Brinkman down by the end line. He'll turn right into a wall and that one go off for a goal kick. So business end of this first half. See if this is fatigue or something else for Brinkman. Hopefully he's all right. Kid's been interesting to watch. He is still down there by the end line. I haven't seen the magic spray introduced in the youth game yet. Got to get the magic spray out there. Oh, is it considered magic? I think it's considered vanishing. <laughs> is uh, the correct terminology from uh, the higher ups uh, within U.S. soccer. I think you're referring to the set piece vanishing spray. I'm referring to the stuff that the trainers bring out there, and no matter what the injury. Oh. They, they spray it on there, and the oh. player magically jumps oh, up. Oh, yeah, 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 I get what you're talking about. Yeah. I think it's just water. <laughs> well, in the Michael Jordan version of Space Jam, it sure was. This New Age LeBron one, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> in the second minute here of stopping this ball played right towards Bond. Gets the, the punch, spot rebound from Delicat. Now a distant shot once again. This one up and over. See, Nationals went route one there. Ohio on their set pieces from that range, they stroke it around, they try to poke and prod and find an opening. And there is no right or wrong here. There is no right or wrong. It's the joy of the game. That nearly worked. Unlike that of the professional level games that we do and the higher level amateur games, we aren't given the stoppage time, so. So we don't put it up on the screen. It's funny, I was watching the US Open Cup in Vermont who had 
about 4,000 fans at their game, amateur side. They had the same situation, and there was a, a guy in the crowd that was declaring it. Not sure if it was the real stoppage time or just his own machinations, but it was, it was interesting to watch. So Brinkman down by the end line. Ends up drawing the corner. So this might here be the last opportunity of the half here for either side. What do you think, Turner? We send the goalkeeper forward end of a half? Put a little excitement into it, or...? The problem is, I don't know if they know how much time they have. It's, it's one thing if there's a clock on the field and you can see, you know, how much time, but this might not be the last. It might not be. You know, so now you're putting your goalkeeper and it's got to do a mad sprint back. I think it's fun. I think they should do it, but... For the casual fan, I think it is fun. The Ball comes viewer. into the box. It's popped up in the air still. With the win, Brinkman. Ball out now right on the goal line as... Josefsky makes the same thing. He gets shoved down at the very end there. Mm. Not sure if that was more of a theatrical moment or actually truth happens. Fair play to him. He sold it well. The punt is what referee looks at her watch. And that will wrap up this first half. And so far, a good one. Thoughts? Agreed. It was a good half. There was a certain shift after that first ball went in, but for the most part, it does seem Ohio is going to continue to have the run of play. They're going to start sending more players forward, and we'll see if Nationals has success on the counter. We'll see if Nationals has success on some of those long-flighted balls on Route A when they get their set pieces. So, a lot to play still. Could go either way. That it could. It's 1-0 here at the half. We're going to step aside here for some commercials. The Nationals have a 1-0 lead of a 27th minute own goal from Ohio Premier. Hey, 45 minutes to go. Will the Ohio Premier make it back, equalize, maybe even win this one, or will Nationals carry this one to the end? We'll find out after this. Now Worrell has a good cutback from him. He'll fire one, and that's going to go in! Granite City Food and Brewery has two Michigan locations in Troy and Northville. Serves made from scratch food, brews in-house beer, and even has brunch every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. To learn more about their daily specials or to book a private party, visit GCFB.com. Make sure you head over to Granite City in Northville at the corner of Seven Mile and Haggerty or the Troy location at 16 Mile and I-75. Are you looking to play at the next level? MSN is now offering player recruitment videos. We are excited to partner with you and your family in getting you to the next level. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! Our mission is to help players take their game to the next level and reach their potential. Not only do we help develop fundamental technical skills such as ball control in tight spaces with different surfaces, dribbling at speed and changing direction, using a variety of 1v1 skills to create space, receiving on a half turn, hook turn and out of the air, finishing off the dribbling, one touch, volleys and headers. We help players get comfortable performing these skills at game speed with pressure and with both their dominant and non-dominant foot. In addition, we help players with their speed of play, awareness of space, defenders and teammates, and also dominate with their off-the-ball movement. We offer a variety of services such as one-on-ones, small groups, large groups, as well as team sessions. We have an experienced coaching staff that is professional, friendly, patient, 
while still holding players to high standards and holding them accountable. No matter what level you're at as a player, I'm confident we can help you get better. Over the past three years, we've built one of the best soccer-specific training facilities in the country and developed one of the most detail-oriented programs to help out players. Visit our website. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a sister. I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. I'm a referee. Are you looking to play at the next level? MSN is now offering player recruitment videos. We are excited to partner with you and your family in getting you to the next level. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Now Worrell has a good cutback from him. He'll fire one, and that's going to go in! take your game to the next level. Did you know that MSN is now offering player recruitment videos? Our packages include a player profile where you show your preferred positions, the club, the league or school that you play in, your current coach contact information, and more. The highlight videos could be self-submitted 15 to 30 clips that will be put into a three to seven minute long video. Video review of your huddle, VO, or other platforms that you might have video on, as well as for an additional charge, MSN can come out and film games for you to create those clips. Our coach evaluation process, which is also an additional charge, where we have college coaches from various levels across the United States that will review your game film and provide feedback on how to improve that film, as well as also evaluating your play and what you can improve on. To learn more about our packages and what we offer, head over to the michigansoccernetwork.com. Remember, your journey starts with a click. Now Worrell has a good cutback from him. He'll fire one, and that's gonna go in! Granite City Food and Brewery has two Michigan locations in Troy and Northville. Serves made from scratch food, brews in-house beer, and even has brunch every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. To learn more about their daily specials or to book a private party, visit GCFB.com. Make sure you head over to Granite City in Northville at the corner of Seven Mile and Haggerty or the Troy location at 16 Mile and I-75. Welcome back here into Dick By Stadium in Auburn Hills, Michigan. 
for this ECNL Ohio Valley Boys soccer matchups, Ohio Premier Nationals soccer. It's one nothing here at the half. The Nationals capitalizing on an own goal, counterattack goal back in the 27th minute. John and Turner alongside Alex Lubianski. We're glad you're here on this Sunday morning joining us. Grab your coffee, grab your eggs, some bacon, some sausage. If you're diabetic, don't have the hash browns. That's something I got to deal with. You know, don't eat the hash browns. Maybe, you know, maybe stay away from that. Maybe the way you stay with the orange juice, but, you know. But, yeah, I'll be healthy in, in what you're, you know, little fruit. I'll right. tell you what, at the half, it, it looks like the second half is going to be more of a chess match than a fist fight. I always look at the benches and see what the coaches are putting out there. Now, it's only a one game, uh, one goal game. So, you know, certainly didn't see any chairs being thrown. No live flames. Nothing of that nature. So it's probably subtle adjustments, and we'll see how it goes in the second half here. Let's see how it goes here in the second half as trying to get this music to stop and get ready here for the start of the second half. The Nationals and the Black Kids going right to left on your screen. As uh, we are about to get underway here. That's a good catch, John. I'm going to flip my sheets around. That's a fantastic catch. Halftime switch. In the open men's circuit, they no longer do that. You're just kind of lucky enough to stroll onto the field. They don't make you switch sides anymore because that's extra movement. As we are officially back underway here, second half action. Again, the Nationals and the all-black kits going right to left on your screen. Ohio Premier in the gray and black kits with white socks going left to right. I know I hit the play button. Am I hitting the wrong one? The network's expanded. I guess started I with the one wrong play one. Button. Yeah, my bad. There we go. What's the clock supposed to be at? Yeah, we'll just go ahead and make a couple seconds here. We'll just, there we go. Perfect. Need to go back to this one. Do not know why I have the wrong bug. But either way, we're back underway here, second half. one nothing here in favor of the Nationals. I'm not sure if they made a goalkeeper change on the Ohio Premier side. Drzevski is still in goal here for the Nationals. Ohio did sub out their proper center back of their first half back three. So we'll see what the new faces put out there. Ball makes its way to... London Sears is now at the foot of Gavin Waters. Wow, Premier starting off where they finished off in possession of this ball. This ball played in towards that far post. Nobody there as it sails out for a goal kick. Good deception on the first service. Got him with the body fake. All the right cues to make him think he was serving that ball, and then he touched it past him. Would have loved an end product, but it's not always there. Starting to see a slight uptick in players on the ground. Not sure if it's the result of a bit of heat increase here, a little bit of dehydration, the cramps start to kick in. You know, this is really the time to be in the marketplace for pickle juice. You know, pickle juice helps prevent cramps. It's a little late after the fact, but from a placebo standpoint, never hurts to have some nice pickle juice.
Ball comes in. Josefsky makes the save. Got the ticker down there at the bottom of your screen. The other game behind us, the 2010s, winning 4-0 over Ohio Option. Premier. And they're in the second half as we speak. So Bond is still in goal. Don't see many four goal swings in the second half of a game. Certainly see it with three, but four is a tough one. Foul called on that far side. Again, John and Turner alongside Alex Lubianski here on this Sunday morning. Right now at just 10.05. Here in Michigan. You're tuning in, let us know where you're watching from. Near and far as this ball played in to the 18. It's won by the Ohio Premier defender. Makes its way towards Logan Sears. Sears plays it out wide on the far side. That was Matthew Boyd, number 22, on that far side. As these next five minutes are brought to you by the Michigan Goalkeeper Academy. Take your goalkeeping to the next level. Register the Michigan Goalkeeper Academy camps this summer, personal training, and so much more. Visit michigangoalkeeperacademy.com. Ball on that far side, down by the end line. Now cleared away. Could have been a very difficult press to solve, but neither of the two runners really put pressure on the goalkeeper correctly, so he was able to just split them. You know, you, you see them coordinate that press better, and uh, I think they might have a goal there. A little shove there at the end. They're gonna say that is a foul. So restart here by the Nationals. Played here to Gasteb Swice. Somehow stays on, still on the pitch. Back now to Reddit. Who's looking to play it to William Jekyll. So, Kentiel White is from Southgate, Michigan watching. We appreciate you watching from Southgate. It's now Jasefsky plays this out wide, and now Swice. Interesting solution. It's Hamilton plays it back. This one touch, and that's a smart play. As Grant Brokaw watches that one still over his head. You know, there's a, there's a part of this game that, you know, I think a lot of people at home, parents alike, fans, whatever, it's a collision right there, 30 yards from goal. A collision with the head, and that's why the yeah. referee calls that one back. And Unfortunately, it looked semi-serious there. Hope the kid's all right. That was certainly to the head. Trying to see who that is. Looks like Owen Cooper, number two. But the, my, getting back to my point, you know, and there's, you know, just being passing the ball, shooting, running, dribbling, all those things you have to do well if you want to play at a high level. But if you really need, want to stay at a high level and play at the highest levels in this country, you have to know how to play the game. Not just being able to collect the ball and pass it, but knowing when not when to pass, when not to pass. Hey, in that moment there, when you watch number 43, Brokaw, that ball's coming in. It could have been very easy for him to attempt to try to play that ball. Instead, he lets it go out of bounds. 
right? It allows his team to maintain possession, and he doesn't have to force himself to do anything that puts him in a situation where he can lose the ball for his team. It's an intelligent play. And you have, in order to play at this level and be at this level for a long period of time, sustained period of time, you have to be an intelligent player. Understand the X's and the O's, so to speak, right, Alex? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, your decision matrix continues to expand as you develop within the game. So, you know, these guys are really playing for result at this point of their career. That You'll really start to notice a difference of how much time is left in the match, what the scoreline is of the match, what the requisite result might be on goal differential for some kind of late season tiebreaker. So these guys are savvy players. They're really developing into what could turn into the next level of player, whether that be collegiate or high level semi-pro or professional ball. And they have to start thinking about all of those things and have to start taking personal accountability. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, those kinds of decisions when kids six, seven, eight years old learning the game, no, you don't want them to let the ball out of play. You want them to keep it in. You want them to get their touches. You want them to develop their craft. But as we start to progress oh, into the wow, part where just off results there. matter, yeah, absolutely you want to see decisions like that being made. So that one went just wide of frame. I think it deflected on its way towards goal. They're going to give a corner here. Hit the outside of the frame. There's a wheel. Uh, on the back of that post here in, in the goal. But a corner kick coming up here for Ohio Premier. Ball laid back. That's one popped up towards back post. Oh boy, with a head of save by Josefsky, then a rebound put home. It's 1 1. Yeah, it's no surprise there for the source of the goal. It was heavily discussed at the first half where the kick taker from Ohio is not accounted for by Nationals and that must be something that halftime the coaching staff realized from Ohio and they started talking about it because that wasn't a reintroduction that ball didn't bounce out organically as part of the game that was that was an intentional set piece where they got a numerical advantage they got a 2v1 early they got a nice ball floated in and and they scored off of it so fair play to the coaching staff at Ohio and game on boys game on do we know who scored that goal? It was uh, a very si eerily similar to what took place yesterday in the 07 matchup, where they were they were up one nothing going in the third minute of that game, and then so that, well, gave up, they scored first, and then they allowed a, a goal in the second half. Game's one one right now here in the 57th minute. And they continue to press as this one cleared up. That was Brady Delmore. Nothing like the injection of a goal into a game. You can just feel the energy. That's right. This part of the broadcast is brought to you by MSN News, the only place to get your breaking soccer news in Michigan. From youth to professional, the Michigan Soccer Network is dedicated to bringing you the, ve the best that sac soccer has to offer in the great state of Michigan. To learn more and to get more of your MSN news, head over to michigansoccernetwork.com, select MSN News, and subscribe today. Yeah, he came back in from an offside position, and Turner's former backup caught that nice, you know, sitting behind John. He also, he also he picked up some real He, he did start in his own right. He didn't, no, he no, didn't, no, you know. no, 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 no. No, we can't change stories midstream. I meant he did start after I left, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Back to Reddit. This one comes up, and that will make its way to Bond. Easy all day long for Bond. There's something special about the ego of a goalkeeper. It doesn't really go away. You just got to kind of hide it, much like a serial killer. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's not an approved message by the Michigan Soccer Network. <laughs> Sorry, that's a Dexter reference. <laughs> uh, teach their own. Well, if you bring up Civil War, I can bring up some pop culture. That's fair. Game two, we'll start talking about Dune 2. That was a great film. So ball back to Josefsky. He makes a huge save off that corner on the head from Boyd, and then the rebound makes its way in. Not much you can do about that if you're Drzezewski, so not his fault. No. 
You know, they look a bit nervous there. It's a little lack of communication and then frustration after the fact. Made the right decision, just got the ball out of play and reorganized. But, yeah, it certainly had an impact on the game. That it has as Ohio Premier still on the ball on that far side. Six Ohio players within 15 yards of that ball in the press. They're really committing. Shove there at the end from Reddit on Gavin Walters. Waters, apologize. First time stopping by, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Coming up here at 11 o'clock, we'll have another matchup here is the Nationals 08 taking on the old Premier 08s. That game kicks off at 11 a.m. Eastern. And our third game of the afternoon, 0506, taking place at 1 p.m. Eastern. All those games will be live here on the Michigan Soccer Network YouTube channel. As we enter the 60th minute. It's twice. Good turn. Now Lincoln Floyd. Lincoln Floyd, like I said, mentioned, had a goal yesterday here for the 07s. Plays it back. That's King. King back to Reddit. Reddit, a one time look. And that looked like an old Buffalo Bills kicker from the Super Bowl back in the early 1990s. <laughs> that went out for, I think, a throw in. <laughs> so you lose four of those in a row and you are etched in history. You know, even the Wrexham documentary talking about those classic Buffalo Bills. But I'll tell you what, this kid Lincoln Floyd on Nationals, real savvy on the ball, really good composure. And that last sequence of play, he had some really nice touches in his own defensive third, found his way up to pitch, continued to give them confidence going forward. He, he could be a player that makes an impact on this game. All played back. Good turn. And that's the second touch by the referee. That one was a little bit less impressive than the first. The first, really, she, she settled it nice. That was more of a bounce pass, a little one-two action, and, and the play continues. So Brokaw fighting through traffic. Still on the ball here in this corner on the near side. Ball finally does go out. Ball played back, all the way to Bond. Bond has no reservations about playing it on the ground into his holding mid's foot. He's done it a few times this half. It's clearly a team that believes in one another and they're confident on the ball. Oh, look at this, Floyd makes his way to the 18. He's got something back post, but Bond right there to make the grab. Fair play to Floyd there. He was able to keep his footing and keep going. You got to respect that. You know, a lot of times you see players go to ground easily there and hope to get a call. The kid clearly believes in himself to keep his footing and try to make a play there. It's well done. Here we are, 63rd minute. This part of the match is brought to you by Premier Sports Center. As Brokaw will take a shot from distance, Szoszewski makes a diving save to his left as this goes out for a corner. 
The Premier Sports Center is a new 60,000 square foot indoor sports facility, the only one of its kind in Macomb County. We offer large regulation size games, fields that are the same size as outdoor fields. No need to compromise space for your games or practices. Learn more at playpremier.com. Brokaw hit that ball. Nice little bit of pace on it, and it bounced at just the right moment. If you get that bounce right in front of a goalkeeper, it really throws off their timing, especially if they go to the ground early. It's a sophisticated strike. It's earned them a corner. Let's see if they get another goal off of it. Ball comes in, deflected through traffic, and now cleared up towards the 18. Put right back in. Turned. Shot. Not enough power. This one now cleared away. Sears, ball loose, out wide, that's Boyd, lays it off, takes a shot through traffic and that one cleared out once again for a corner, so this continued pressure from Ohio Premier here in the 65th minute has them knocking on the doorstep for goal number two. Second half is fire today. Loving this energy from Ohio in the second half. So quick corner once again, this one into the mix. Now Reddit. A little shove there from Reddit. Now a yeah, penalty he's gotten called. The call. He's gotten the call. So Reddit is going to be called for the penalty. I think that Boyd that went down. And now here's an opportunity. Hey, with continued pressure inside the box, a lot of stuff happening. There's a chance you could have a penalty called against you, a foul. That's exactly what happened here. And now Ohio Premier has a chance to take the lead here in the 65th minute. Carbon copy of the goal off the corner. They touch it in, numerical advantage, unopposed service. Nationals have not adjusted defensively on these corner kicks and it's starting to hurt them a bit in this game. So Logan Sears is the one stepping up to take this one. He has a dirty left foot, we saw that in the first half. Looks as though he's gonna step up with his left foot here. Josefsky set. Sears steps up, puts it up, and in. And just like that, it's 2-1. Confident strike. Just under the crossbar. And every single visual cue is wrong. It's just a luxury to have a left-footed player. You don't see it often. My dream. My absolute dream is to have 11 men on the same team that are all left-footed and just see what the opposition has to deal with when you do that. But hey, they have one. Fair play to Sears. So it's two to one. Oops, put the wrong score on the clock there, my bad. Gonna fix that. Gotta give the score to the right team. There we go. Throughout much of this game, possession, if I had to guess, would be some in the neighborhood of between 60 and 65% in favor of Ohio Premier, and that might be being conservative. The Nationals have shown times, at times, being dangerous. My in-stat data is telling me 62.7% in wow. favor of Ohio. And my catapult GPS trackers heart rate monitors, all the metrics you could want. It's not really a factual game, John. It's an emotional one. And I think Ohio has found a good way to rally, come back in the second half, stay, stay confident, stay believing in their game plan, and good things are happening. numbers to join on this one as well. Ball on that far side. That's Reddit with a little shove and these guys are getting into a tassel on that far side. Some more pushing. So the referee's going to come over. She's going to pull out a card. Yeah. It's a yellow card. 
I think that's Brinkman on that far side, but I'm not 100% sure. So this game's temperature is starting to rise here in Auburn Hills, Michigan. I was just going to make an indication. I'm not sure we're sitting inside of a tepid bathtub anymore. We might have a little bit of a hot tub jet situation, and I love it. So 22 minutes to go in this one. 2-1 here in favor of Ohio Premier. A 66th minute penalty shot goal by Logan Sears. All the difference in this one. John and Turner alongside Alex Lubianski. Slick turn. Played back by Brokaw. Under immediate pressure, but good work to get out of that pressure was Barthel. Settled down by Boyd on that far side, but it was out of touch. Ohio's got a really nice ability. You know, they're so calm, they're so composed on the ball, but one errant touch, and they're not too proud to then just thwomp it up in the sky and try to get the game back under. You know, they, they are making intelligent decisions, like John indicated earlier. They're thinking about all sorts of factors when they decide what to do on the ball. They're not stuck in one style, one mentality. They're not trying to do things above themselves, and it's a good team. Is this part of the match brought to you by Legend Motors? Hundreds of cars to choose from in our inventory. Legend Motors has three locations to serve you in Ferndale, Waterford, and Detroit. Visit legendmotors.com today. Your journey to a new car starts at legendmotors.com. Uh -oh. Almost given away, but right back to Josefsky. So clear this one up over midfield. A little shove there. That might be a foul. No, it's not. But there might be a foul. There it is. This is game continuing to get chippy. Josefsky, much more efficacy on the rolling ball and striking it as opposed to the sidewinder. I wonder if he's going to adjust his distribution style based on those last couple moments on the ball. And all of you watching near and far, we appreciate it. Continue to tell us where you're watching from. Got a question for us. You know, we, we asked this question yesterday of the fans in, in Cincinnati, Ohio, who that's where Ohio Lee was from. You guys are from Dublin, Ohio. Curious where you guys like to eat your good food there in Dublin, Ohio. We got some great messages yesterday about, you know, good eats and things like that in the Ohio, uh, Cincinnati area. What, uh, what is uh, it that the Ohio premiere, when they're in town, where do you guys go to get your grub? I wonder if Dublin's origin is from across the pond. I don't know if there's some Irish grub there that you would like. I don't, I don't know. There's a couple substitutions coming in here now for Ohio premiere. Ohio premiere is coached by David Wall. Gronthic Chatterjee is the head coach of the 07s for the Nationals. So Brinkman now actually now in. He was not in there a moment ago, so he did not get the yellow card. This ball played in by Swice. Back post, and that one goes wide. Very dangerous moment there. It's good service. Love to see that header reintroduced across the frame of the goal to the far post. Even if it doesn't go in, you give everybody a chance to either score for or against themselves. We already saw an own goal earlier today. That would be a good opportunity to see a second one. Andrew Adams says Antonio's Pizza. It's a great place to eat in Ohio. Antonio's. Andrew Adams is dialed in. That is a prompt answer. And I will be getting some pizza later. Well, what, what question though? What kind is, is it like your New Haven style? I'm going to go like bar stool here, like El Presidente, uh, David Portno, Portnoy, uh, in regards to is it New Haven style? Is it deep dish? You know, is it New York? You know, I mean, what kind of style pizza are we talking about? Uh, is it square, round? I mean, and you know, do you get pineapple on your pizza in Ohio, everybody? I mean, that, that is a big controversial thing. Pineapple or no pineapple on your pizza, Alex? Are you pineapple or no pineapple? Well, to take a slight detour, I do enjoy pineapple, but my wife put me into a dietary prison about two months ago, and I'm eating this ketogenic diet. 
I'd still like to see somebody release a keto pizza where instead of crust, oh, look at you, Brinkman you now. bake the cheese. He's into the 18. He's got double teamed. Don't want to draw another penalty shot. Brinkman still on the ball. Lays it back to Brokaw. This one put in. Back post towards Boyd. He settles it down. Ooh, a little half volley up and over. Foot shape hurt him there. So you're saying... Timing was all right. Timing was all right, but the foot shape hurt him. That's why I went over the bar. So you're saying... You're saying because of the diet restrictions, you're not going to put pineapple on your pizza. So you're not I'll against pineapple. I'll put pineapple on, but the crust, the crust needs to be addressed, you know. And if I'm out in public and there's human beings around me, which unfortunately once in a while I have to put myself in that state, you know, I, I got to eat pizza with a fork and a knife and scoop all the toppings off. So it, look at this shot from want, distance! Oh, wow, just what wide look. from Boyd. My goodness, that was from 35 yards out. It went just wide of frame. Josefsky had to reach out all his might, and it went wide. Tell you what, Boyd corrected that foot shape and then some. That was a brilliant strike. Just missed the upper 90. Outstanding. Little little back and forth now in the comments. Emmett O'Brien says, Andrew, that Antonio's place um, sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you... Oh, that's, uh, I'm sorry, I just, I, <clears throat> I think that's funny. I think it's funny. Hopefully you're both from Ohio, and that's not like an Ohio-Michigan thing, you know what I mean, but. You know, this live interaction with a, comments <laughs> could be the, the X factor to the broadcast. I got to tell you, I love this game. Most people at the stadium love this game, but it, the American audience, while it's improving, still, you know, it's, it's often a game that ends 1-0, 0-0. So to have some interactivity with the audience, you could really be on to something. In Russia, rather than go into all these leagues that the U.S. has where everyone's just trying to find the way to get Promo Rel into the system here, in Russia, instead of changing things that way, they have a broadcast-centric league where players are wearing GoPros. There's all sorts of interactivity. It's like the XFL was when it failed, but it really was brilliant. And uh, you might be on the cutting edge here, Turner. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, so uh, Andrew Adams goes, he's lying. I work there. So uh, he, I guess clearly there's a, 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 you know, a little battle there between friends uh, talking about how bad the place that the other friend works at. That, that's uh, that's kind of funny. So <laughs> Happy to facilitate those things on the air. Hey, we went to a great local pub here yesterday after the game. Buffalo Wild Wings here is where we went after the game. Um, obviously, it's not a local pub. But, yeah, you know, is that, you get is that a small <laughs> Michigan <laughs> gem? I've never heard of that one. Uh, we, yep, yeah, no, it, it is definitely a small gem, <laughs> a nationwide gem. To be fair, I'm not a huge fan of Buffalo Wild Wings anymore. Actually, more of a I, 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 when it comes to the wings, I actually tend to actually like Wingstop better. But uh, Wingstop does a nice job, and they also deliver it to your house. And nothing beats convenience. I got to say that. Do pay a little extra for that uh, the convenience. That's okay. 77th minute. It's 2-1 here in favor of Ohio Premier. A 66th minute penalty shot conversion for Logan Sears is all the difference in this one. That was just some 10 minutes ago. There's Brinkman now on the ball up this right side. Down into the corner. He's double teamed. Now he makes his way. My, my. That was intentional, that little drag roll heel touch. That wasn't a mistake. That's well thought through. Brokaw back post towards Boyd. Man, that touch deceived him. He was wide open past Reddit on that far side. He gets a better touch. That might be an opportunity for the second goal here of this half for Ohio Premier. The show is London on Sears. Today. I said Landon. Did I say Landon Sears? I said Logan. I you know, I apologize. You're right. It's London. I know that because like before the small the, local town of London. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like, hey, it's it's like two places that you've always wanted to go. When you were a kid, it was Sears yeah. in London, England. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Sears is no more, unfortunately. I don't think they're anymore. Are there anymore? Sears? Yeah, we got we got our hole in the wall Buffalo Wild Wings. No one's ever been to, and then uh, yeah, the little small 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 village of London. Not All very globally back. known. No, Sears Jeffsky. is done. Sears is done. And at least the 12 Oaks, no one's replaced them. Floyd loses the ball. Come 
ball. Hope that doesn't impact Floyd's decision making because he has been silky smooth on the ball. He's been uh, a gem to watch on this Nationals team today. And hey, all attacking players lose the ball. So just put it back on your foot and keep doing what you're doing. Sarah Swiss Weiss keeps saying that Coldstone Creamery delivers. Now, I got to ask, is this the second time in two games that she has mentioned Coldstone? And I, 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 my family, we enjoy Coldstone. We do. It, 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 you know, it's that creamery, you know, on that, that cold thing that they do and they make it all into a, a clump of ice cream mix. Now, I can't eat that anymore. But with that being said, I'm assuming you own three of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I'm just going to put it out there. You, you said it yesterday. I, I had this distinct feeling that you own a couple of Cold Stone Creameries. And, um, oh, the online name is just an <laughs> alias. Her real last name is Cold Stone. I'm just going to throw it out there. <laughs> we call, we call, in this biz, we call those plugs. So we're getting... <laughs> So 79th minute, actually 80th minute, and this part of the match is brought to you by Cold Stone Creamery. I'm just kidding. Party <laughs> right, Monday Sportsplex. Monday Sportsplex is a first-class indoor sports facility featuring indoor soccer leagues, tournaments, soccer training, and more. We also host other indoor sports activities such as indoor baseball, practice football, and fitness groups. Rent your space at Monday. Visit mondaysportsplex.com. Oh, she's got a fourth coming soon, so I was very oh, assumptive. Get over the now look at her son, Swice. Cuts it back on his left foot. Shot far post, saved by Bond. Come on, Swice, get one in for Creamery. Coldstone Creamery. Did not happen. We Cold tried. Coldstone Creamery, we <laughs> deliver. <laughs> Ball back out here to Swice. He'll give it and go. Almost gets it back, but a good defensive win by Ohio Premier. You know, we do have advertising space available in our broadcast, just so you know, Sarah. <laughs> Does Coldstone make keto ice cream? Help me out, Turner. I have no good dietary options anymore. I'm just a miserable man. I have lost some weight, though. Swice in the corner. Puts into the 18, right back to him, down by the end line. That might actually go off for a corner, and it does. So someone says, I hate Cold Stone, but what is your, who's your favorite WNBA player? Well, I, I, I'm not a big WNBA fan. I, I just not that, I, I, I don't even watch the NBA, to be fair. Uh, and it's nothing to do about either men or women. I, I just, I'm not a huge, now I do cover college basketball as part of my job at Oakland, but I do, uh, I, I'm not a big basketball fan. This is one comes in, boy, Bond gets a touch on it. Makes its way to DeWitt. But I, I will tell you this much, Caitlin Clark has done a fantastic job for girls, women's sports in general. Obviously college basketball, and now as she you know, goes into draft here tomorrow night, WNBA. You know, if you had to ask me who my favorite player right now is, it's definitely Caitlin Clark. That's on both men and women's sports. She has really transcended the women's game. And I'm excited about what she's going to do in the WNBA. So hopefully they can answer your question in a better way. This ball comes in. That was Delmore who was intended for. One back by Naul Larraquette. And now here comes the National. They have been challenge. dangerous in transition. Lucas says Jake Golke is going to be a legend. It's true. He is a legend. Swice now up this near side. Ball on his left foot. Saucy. This ball comes in and then right there to make the grab is Bond. It's great footwork by Coldstone. It's uh, Jack Goldkey is how you pronounce his name. <laughs> Not Goldkey, but that's okay. Up until a few weeks ago, no one knew who he really was. We did here at Oak University. <laughs> knew how special he was but now the nation knows Jack Golke not only how he plays but his personality and both of those are equally epic tell you what Oakland University has really put the state of California on the map jeez <laughs> wow <laughs> Alex Lubianski state of California I love it I love it Oakland University here just about two and a half three miles from where we are here right now 
For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Oakland University just surprised the nation when they beat the Kentucky Wildcats in the opening round of the NCAA March Madness Tournament here just over a month ago. Swice, 84th minute. Good cutback on his left foot. He is a crafty player. He laid it back and this one put into, into the box. It's Dylan Hamilton who put that one in. We're in for about 12 minutes of trying to hold on to a one goal lead. Ohio's really started to sit low in a block. I don't know if it's a function of fatigue, but boy, it's a tough task at any level to just try to hold on to a one goal lead in that way. Really would love to see them go back to the style that got them there, get on the ball, have some joy, stroke the ball around and get forward. Otherwise, they're setting up for a tall, tall order at the end of this match. Inside the 18 shot, that one's deflected on its way to goal, and that's all for a corner kick. So here we are, less than five minutes to go here, plus stoppage time. We'll get our last read in of the game. Evolution Soccer. Build and perfect your skills and elevate your game to a new look, to a new level. Book your sessions today at evolutionperformancetraining.com. Call 248-795-5291. That's 248-795-5291 or evolutionperformancetraining.com. This ball comes in from the corner. Goes back post. Makes its way still inside the 18. Shot through traffic. Bond makes the initial save and then cleared away. What a stand tall, Bond. That's a brave save from the young man. Face to the ball, eyes wide open. That's a good save by the kid. Here we go. Can they put the game away? Oh, look at this work here. It's from DeWitt. What a great save from Josefsky. Strong foot save by Josefsky there. Well done. And he's gonna need to make more of those. This team's definitely committing numbers forward, trying to chase the lead, trying to get back in this one. Gonna take some heroics from him to keep them sound at the back as they commit numbers forward. Now, of course, we're talking about decision-making. This throw in at the highest level should take about 336 seconds. Should be tying his shoe, calling his mom. Kill the game. Ball back post to boy, he takes a turn. Now Josefsky comes up with it. Go big, young man. Erase the numbers early. Hey! The 2010s just completed their game here behind us. Oh, let's go, boys. We are streaming the 1 p.m. game. We're streaming both 1 p.m. games, so don't go anywhere. Those games will all be coming up here next on the Michigan Soccer Network. We have an 11 a.m. Uh, kickoff as well. So in total today, six games today. We did six games yesterday, so 12 in total this weekend. You're going to need a vacation. Sometimes we only do 12 in a, in a month. Well, actually, we have 30 scheduled for this month, so. Very impressive. Go from zero to 30 to stay right there, Sam. That's, that's a lot. That's the automated metric, zero to 30 in XYZ seconds. Here we go. It's not even Pi Day. <laughs> <laughs> player down for the Nationals, Lou, that was Delicat. Now here comes DeWitt. Well done by the official, letting play continue. Plays good, is into Delmore. Good patience by her. He's got Boyd out wide. Boy, been dangerous all half. Puts this one in the middle. Back post now. Brinkman right there. Runs right into Josefsky, who makes it say Brinkman is slow to get up. So 88th minute. It's 2-1 here in favor of Heil Premier. Tell you what, if DeWitt called Brinkman off, I think they had a goal there. 
but Brinkman didn't know he was there. Look at Del Delcat, just can't get a good clean touch on that one. Now here comes a counterattack. Electric, end-to-end -end stuff. Gotta love the end of the match. A lot of space now in the middle of the park. Now let's see who has the metronome for Ohio. Are they gonna decide to slow it down, try to kill the game with possession? Brokaw. Really, some sophisticated thought process going on on the field today. It is a joy to watch. Delmore. It's actually Spoonhauer, apologize. Spoonhauer now. DeWitt. DeWitt tries to weave through three players. Ooh. Little wind condition counterattack could have been on there. He struck it well. He follows. Oh, and that's saved by Josefsky. Could have been all she wrote there. Could have been all she wrote as we're entering the 90th minute. I'm feeling four minutes of stoppage time. I know there's not the digital sign up, but it feels right for today's event. Well, you know what? Let's put it up. Let's put up the four minutes. Let's do it. Uh, I can do that for you. We'll add in, uh, we'll do four minutes. Yeah, with a, with a silhouette of my nose, of uh, course. I might win a little, a little faster. It is, I'll, it is I'll only cut. my four minutes, not <laughs> the actual game officials, but. No worries, is this is Dylan Hamilton. He's got Lincoln Floyd. Floyd, oh, good move. Almost got to buy the defender. Frustration, but no faked injury. You know, nothing like a bad touch and then a faked injury. So now I'll add the plus four. There it is on your screen. Well done. Stoppage time, our clock continues to count up. I know that that might be different and you know, you, they start having the plus two and you're in the minutes counting, but you know, we don't have that technology here, so we'll run with this. Slip and fall on that far side, ball still in. Ball played. Into mm. Simeon. Pass was behind Coach. him, slowed the whole counter down. And a lot of numbers behind the ball for Nationals. You would think they're chasing this late game lead. Still had five men behind the play. Really gotta commit numbers forward. be a blemish to an otherwise perfect record on the weekend. So just less than what we believe to be two minutes to go here in this game. It's 2-1 in favor of Ohio Premier. A 66th minute penalty shot conversion for London Sears. Is all the difference in this one. Turn and spin out, but advantage been given. It was Delcat that went down, then lost. Brokaw, good defensive work from him. Let's see if they start thinking about going to the corner at this part of the game. Ball put out wide. That's Brinkman. Slot this in towards DeWitt. Doesn't make its way through traffic. Tell you what, that's ill-advised for me. You know, they had control of the ball. They have control of the game. Kill another two minutes in the corner. Get fouled. Get clipped. Well, you were wrong with your uh, estimate, just so you know. I'm not trying to call you out. I was just saying you, you said four. It was more like two, maybe three. But either way. Sometimes when you're wrong, you're right, and vice versa, my friend. <laughs> So there it is, your final score here, game number one, the 2007s come to an end here. 2-1 in favor of Ohio Premier. They scored a goal in the 56th minute. We don't know who got that, so we do apologize for that. But in the 66th minute, London Sears converts a PK to give the Ohio Premier side 
a 2-1 to one victory here over the National Soccer Club on this Sunday morning. The lone goal here in the 27th minute was an own goal from Ohio Premier. So they actually scored all three goals here in this one. But to either way, uh, your final score, 2-1 to one here from Dick Va... Sorry. I was... Dick, what's the name of the field again? I screwed that up, man. Dick by Stadium? Dick by Stadium. Everybody <laughs> just did that at Avondale High School. By the way, for Alex Lubianski, I'm Jonathan Turner. We'll be back here in just a few minutes for game number two, the 2008s, competing here at Dick by Stadium at, Aven at Avondale High School. So long, everybody. Cheers. MSN All-State Media Day for Girls Soccer. Jonathan Turner alongside Dan Stickrett. Ball comes in. A good hit! one nothing. Shot another save from Etheridge. Rebound. And it goes in the back of the net. The Bulldogs up one nothing. Burzma. But then from Lasma. 3 nothing. Do it high. Do it high with a shot. Upper 90. Effectively today here on the Michigan Soccer Network, we are launching our new division of player recruitment videos. Mario Canoe now finds Sock. Finds Sock's got a left-footed banger. He shoots it! It's in! The Red Horse Eagles!